Hey guys, welcome back to the Schlag. It's Morgan. I'm here at Highland Cycles. Zach's not here yet because I'm here early. As you can see, this week's going to be a good week. We've got a lot of work to do. I hope you guys join us for it. This is our weekly vlog or Schlag shop vlog uh, of my little motorcycle shop here in Montrose, Colorado called Highland Cycles. I hope you guys join us. I hope you guys like it. If you do, maybe hit the subscribe button um, and maybe turn on that little notification bell. That'd be super cool. Um, yeah. We got a lot of work to do, let's get after it. Yeah! All right guys, first on my lift is this lovely 2019 KX450F of folk legend Maple Taylors. And uh, <laughs> We are going to be checking the valves on this thing, so uh, that should be a good one because if you own a four-stroke, you should really know how to at least check your valves, if not adjust them. So I'm going to get to that here real soon, but really, 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 really excited about what is in this bag. I have known for a while that this was coming, but I kept it to myself because I didn't want to, A, get too excited about timing because I didn't know when it was going to happen. Also, um, they asked me to kind of keep it on the down low, but a lot of you guys have been mentioning and talking about the vest that I wear when I ride, that kind of army green thing, and I have responded to a lot of you guys. It's the wolf and girl ops vest, all this stuff, but they've been discontinued, and anyway, whatever. Finally, we have the replacement from Wolf. Really stoked to take this thing out of its package and get a look at it. I They finally released on their website that it was coming. Um, I'm really very thankful that Wolf uh, has chosen me as an ambassador to promote this thing. Um, I love, love, love the other vest. This one's supposed to be even better. I'm really excited about that. So let's open this thing up. Boom. There we go. Oh, I'm so excited about this, guys. Really, really, really stoked. So, one of the big things you guys are obviously going to notice is that it's black. For all of you fashion-conscious people, it's black, okay? <laughs> uh, there's a lot of people complaining that the other one was olive drab, green. To you, I say, really? Come on. Anyway, but it is black, so that's cool. Um, and it looks a lot like it used to look. Uh, it's basically a backpack here with pockets and a vest. Uh, it's very much, um, very, very similar. But a couple things I was reading about, I'm really excited about, uh, that are different. First of all, it is made to fit much larger people. So, Brady Metter, maybe you could wear this. Um, like to actually try to get one to fit you so we'll have to talk also probably the only thing that i ever really was worried about was the back pocket it wasn't big enough to put the water bladder in and then put other stuff in and then pull the water bladder out and then put it back in and it was just kind of a pain that has been solved it is much bigger now you can see it's you know, been crushed like that, but it's a lot way bigger. Internal pockets still has uh, the mole straps to hook stuff to it. Still has the Velcro to customize it, but now it's got Velcro here, which is really cool. And down here, uh, these pockets are basically the same as the other one. Um, by the way, guys, I'm going to go to an in-depth review and discussion about this thing. And actually, I'm going to shoot a video of me uh, taking all the stuff out of my other one and putting it into this one and showing kind of what that looks like and how that works. YKK zippers, which is cool. So yeah, I am really, really excited. <laughs> Thank you, Wolf Enduro. Thank you so much. I, yeah, I'm blown away. The thing looks great. It feels just as sturdy and burly as the last one, but it's got all the stuff, the little problems that the other one had fixed. So Really, the bigger back compartment, now the thing is more adjustable to bigger framed people. And then um, it's black, obviously. Uh, but all the other 
awesome features are still there. So, guys, I'm stoked. This thing's awesome. Yeah, really, really, really excited. All right, guys, so we got the top off of the motorcycle. Um, so, quick note, when you're taking the tank off these things, it, the KX is used to be a little easier now. Uh, it's a little bit more involved because the fuel pump wire goes like around the frame through these little holders. Anyway, just take your time. I, I mean, I didn't break anything, but it would be easy to break something if you just try to yank it off there. Um, like I said, the older ones were a little bit easier the way they had it routed. That's what the valve train looks like. On these KXs, this is the exhaust. This is the intake because the intake is over here. Obviously, the exhaust is over here. So what we need to do is we need to rotate this motor to where these lobes are pointing out and away from the actual valves. So, I don't know if you guys can see in there. Let me see if I can... Yeah, there, there's a little mark right there. That is top dead center. So, also, you can look, there's a dot right there, and a dot right there. You want those to be parallel, to make sure we're in time, which we are. That is good. Then I like to take this, since it's a breaker bar, and try to like, Get this as much up and down as possible so it wants to kind of hold it there. Now, let's make sure we're on top dead center of compression. We are. It feels pretty good. All right. So, the left intake is tight, so we are going to have to adjust oh. that. That's good. Abel had a great question. He said, what part is wearing out that's causing this to be out of spec? So, in a cylinder, this is a valve, an intake valve to be specific and it goes up in the head in a hole like this and when the cam rotates it pushes it open fuel and air go in this way it closes which allows it to compress piston comes up like this compresses goes bang then the exhaust valve over here opens the exhaust goes out anyway so this right here is called the valve face and it bunts up against the valve seat and if we take a look at, let's see if I can get this. Uh, there we go. If you look right there, see how that is cupped? That cupping is what is this thing is slowly raising up into the motor. So what it's doing is it, as it goes bang, 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 it's wearing this face down and it's sucking up, causing the clearance to go away on top. Cool. So as that thing comes up, clearance goes away up here, then what it does is it holds the cam effectively is sitting on this and it holds it open just a little bit causing it to lose compression so this is a completely worn out one this is not what maples look like but they all they will eventually look like this because they all do um over time so that's how a valve looks when it gets worn out so. you didn't buy this new did you yeah they did yeah so did you ever have an air filter be off a little bit or let one go a little dry or anything like that? Um, you notice any dust on the inside? Yep, once. That's all it takes. Yep, yep. That is all it takes on a force tread. Yeah, under I think is what I did. Yeah, that is, that is quite literally all it takes for one to come apart. Gotcha. So, um, yeah, so, because one time, if you get any dust, because that's what happens, is that dust comes in mm -hmm. through the intake and it goes onto that face here. We'll describe this. So as intake's coming in, if you get any dust on this valve face, it acts like an abrasive as it sure. bangs against the head. Yeah. And it wears that. There's a hard coating on these to help last a long time. But if you wear that off, they start to wear out fast. Gotcha. So that is probably what happened. Okay. All right, guys, so the next job on this lovely 350, uh, we put a new moose and tire on the back, but right now we're gonna work on the air filter because after last week's vlog, I got a lot of comments about, well, how do you clean the air filter? I'm like, great. So um, there's lots and lots of ways to do this. I personally use a solvent tank, but the principles are the same, right? Whether you have a solvent tank or you use cleaner or whatever, the principles are the same. So let me get some gloves on and I'll show you what we do. One thing I like to do when I get it off is inspect, make sure everything's good, it looks good. There's a lot of grease in there,
but there's no dirt, so that's a good thing. That's what you're hoping for. Grease is okay. It can clog things up, but it's never gonna blow anything up. So, come over here to our solvent tank. And now, this is the part, like, it's gonna maybe look a little bit differently for each person, but we need solvent of some kind. I personally use, it's mineral spirits from our local place, um, but really anything will work. Any kind of solvent that dissolves grease and things like that. So, um, you can buy cleaner, there's lots of different versions, but, what you want to do is get the filter soaked in whatever solvent you're going to use. All right. Then we're going to really mush it in there, get that solvent into the foam. We'll do it again. Again, if you're using like the PJ1 cleaner or Bell Ray cleaner or whatever, it works just the same. It just doesn't. You don't have a big tank. So, there we go. You can see it's starting to look good. Now, here is what I think the key to making sure that this filter doesn't disintegrate and the glue doesn't start to come apart. Because the, all these seams are glued together and what you don't want is that solvent sitting in there and dissolving the glue. Not all solvents will, but some, some do. But if you use gasoline or anything like that, it can if you let it sit. But if you don't, what you do is you come over here with some soapy water. This has muck off in it, but honestly, fabuloso, uh, dish soap, whatever. Um, just some good grease, petroleum dissolving soap. And you can take Dawn dish soap and just drizzle it on here too. It doesn't really matter. That actually works really, really well. And it's cheap. There we go. Now we're gonna turn our water on and make it warm. You don't want it super hot because the hot can dissolve the glue too. We're just gonna rinse this thing out till all of the petroleum products are off of it. There we go. Filter's looking really good. Now we're going to take it by Angry Zach. He's on his bandit. El Bandito. <laughs> we're going to take it out here and we're going to put it outside and we're going to let this thing dry. That is another key to this whole thing, is making sure that that thing gets totally dry. Because um, we got most of the petroleum products out of it uh, when we just rinsed it. But there's still some, let's be honest, it's not completely perfect. But that thing's going to dry up, all of it's going to be gone, and then we're going to oil it like I did in the last one. So, so that's done and drying. Now I'm going to change front tires on this bike, and then start on... Uh, installing plastic and changing oil and things like that. Hey guys, so it's actually Thursday morning. I'm coming into the shop and I was excited to see that box there because it means an awesome mail time is coming. So I think you guys are gonna wanna see this. Oh yeah, so at least some of you guys are gonna wanna see this. Some of you guys like Mr. Brady Metter are going to uh, not like this, but I am so stoked. So let's check and see what's in here. It's from our friends at Keeping it fresh. I will be putting mine on today. Oh, boom! Yeah! So stoked! Look at that. So excited. The come and take it two stroke pipe. Yeah! I love it. All you two stroke haters out there, take that. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. So, all right, guys, today is going to be a crazy day. The next thing on my lift is that 300 Husqvarna TX right over there. And at the same time on Mr. Zach's lift is this uh, 250XC owned by the same gentleman. And we are doing top ends and full suspension services on both. So it's exciting. Oh, there's Zach Sheets right there. It's coming in hot, super angry for the day. We're we just got to keep them fired up. Today is ride day, so maybe a little less angry. 
which will then ramp up as I knock him down in the first turn. So, <laughs> yeah, anyway, let's get to work. All right, guys, so got everything out of the way. Uh, I'm not shooting a super in-depth video on this um, because this is just like every other 300, really, because this is a carbureted one. It does have a smart carb on it. I will show you something going on in there here in a little bit. So this thing has an S3 head, so let's pull this thing off. There we go. So there is the inside of an S3 head. I know we've discussed this before, but it's uh, clearly just a kind of a mass-produced part um, that raises the compression, changes the shape of the squish and things like that, but honestly, nothing special. Um, so we're putting this one back on the 300 because this bike came with this when, uh, when, when this guy bought the bike, it already had this head on it. So that is what an S3 looks like on the inside. Like I said, nothing all that special. All right, got everything loose. Let's see if we can't get this cylinder up off of here. So, you see those little marks right there? Those, you put your finger in here, you can't feel them with your uh, fingernails. And that's the key, um, is if you, if you want to take your fingernail and run them around there, and if you can feel anything with your fingernail, you got to put the brakes on, get the thing replayed or whatever, but I can't feel any of that. So I think with some cleaning and a ball hone, yes, a ball hone, uh, that I'm going to run through here, against all of your guys' better judgment, I'm going to do it, and this thing's going to last a really long time anyway. Uh, but with that, we're going to have it, it'll be ready to rock and roll, so... Uh, power valve is moving really, really smoothly, and it's uh, super clean. So probably uh, take this whole cylinder, put it in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner, get it really, really clean, uh, and then put it back on the motorcycle. So um, I don't think we're going to take the power valve apart this time because uh, it was done the last time a piston was through it so uh, and it's all really clean and moving super smooth so um, no reason to do that right now uh, maybe recommend it for the next time around so all right I'm gonna go get this thing cleaned up and grab that piston swap pistons and then we'll put it back together oh man guys so I have some learning for everybody here this is exciting um, I don't think this motor is going back together today uh, so, upon closer inspection, I did find, like, I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a pretty good scratch. Uh, I didn't notice it right away. Anyway, it's right there on the intake side. That probably wouldn't be the end of the world. This guy that owns this would probably just say, put it back together, I'm going to run it, because it probably run just fine for a while, but... I forgot to mention to you guys that when he dropped it off, he said, oh yeah, by the way, on the 300, can you take the slide out of the carburetor and clean it up for me? And I said, why, what do you mean clean it up for <laughs> Why would I need to clean that up for you? Should be nice and clean, right? And uh, he's like, oh, it's just dirty. I'm like, dirt. So uh, I said, okay, that's probably not good. But I pulled the air filter and if that's not a half-assed job of oiling an air filter, I don't know what is. Uh, that is pitiful. And this side has no oil on it. And for all of you guys on the internet that gave me crap about over-oiling the air filter that I just did the video on, yeah, well, my slide doesn't look like that, my piston doesn't look like this, my cylinder doesn't look like this, my stuff runs and keeps running good. So, yeah. Anyway, I'd rather have a little too much oil. So here's the piston. Uh, you can see lots of blow by here, some weird marks up in here. It's got this funky film. I don't know what oil he's running, but it's like weird on top. I've never felt anything like that. The cylinder's messed up, the air filter's bad. And then let me show you. 
there. Let's see if I can... Uh, you guys can't really totally see it as well as I can. Oh, but there's a crap load of dirt in there. And then I'm looking in the crank and it doesn't look awesome either. <sighs> so, I'm making a phone call. He's gonna love me. Um, dude, it's ridiculous. Anyway, <sighs> I hate doing this, but at the same time, I'm not putting this thing back together and sending the bike out that's gonna blow up in two hours, one hour, 10 hours, whatever. Um, yeah, anyway, whatever. Uh, I'll come back and check in when I find out what he decides he wants to do. All right, so I spoke to the owner of this motorcycle, and despite me expressing my deep concerns for this engine and how long it's gonna last if I put it back together, he said, and I quote, I'm gonna run it till it fucking blows. So I bleeped that out, but I think you all know exactly what he said. But um, yeah, so I'm gonna put it back together. I'm not gonna even film putting it back together because uh, yeah, I don't want you guys doing this. <laughs> so I'm gonna put it back together and then we're gonna service the suspension, but oh my gosh. Anyway, I will definitely stay in touch with him. He's a friend. And we will definitely keep you guys up to date on how long this motor holds up. It's not going to be that long. So anyway, I'm going to put it back together and then we'll check in with some other job that's actually appropriate. Now I want to show you guys our new cool tool. We've got the um, pipe blowy outy system. Yeah, it's the pipe blowy outy system. That's what I'm calling it. Um, from Mino RX MX Racing Products. I don't know. Anyway. So it's pretty cool, fits just about any pipe. <clears throat> uh, you just tighten this part down, then tighten this plate down. It's got a rubber gasket on it. We're gonna put air in there. Uh, this over here holds this part, and uh, you're really only supposed to put about 40 pounds in this setup, uh, so that's all we'll do. Um, but it's pretty cool. We're gonna put some air in it, and then we got a map gas torch, and we're gonna do our best to try to get this out. So that should be right at about 40 pounds. Now we take our map gas torch. Heat the heck out of this and let's watch this. Hopefully I can set up a time lapse and we'll watch this thing get bigger. That worked pretty good. I'm super happy with that. Uh, and I think Mr. Mosler will also be happy with that. Uh, so yeah, that turned out great. I'm sure we could maybe give it a little bit better if we added a little more air to it, but I don't want anything like this going boom and flying off the friggin' and uh, probably safety wire this and do some other things to it to make it hold, but uh, I think that's good enough. So that's awesome. All right, guys, <laughs> we got everything back together, suspension serviced. Uh, and now I'm going to see if the thing starts. <laughs> because you never know with what we just did. I'm not proud of this job at all. Um, but, you know, you guys want to come into the schlog, into the weekly workings of a real motorcycle shop. Sometimes this happens. <laughs> um, but he's been forewarned. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to set you guys down and see if the thing starts up. Well, there we go. Turns out that these motors are even tougher than I thought they were. <laughs> Turns out you can do pretty much anything to them and they keep running. And that's just nuts. So anyway, oh my gosh. Oh, well, well, that's awesome. Uh, finish bolting some stuff up and we'll get on to the next job. Ha <laughs> ha, mail time. We're gonna finish this episode of the Schlag with mail time. Um, because I am so excited about what's in this box, guys. Oh man, really, really stoked. Um, let's open her up. I think between what's in here and this other thing I'm gonna show you guys, uh, we're gonna have a ton of fun and do a lot of good this year. This is 
coming from Klamath Falls, Oregon, from Mr. Bill Dart. And it is a chainsaw mount for the front of my motorcycle. And I am really excited about this. These things are super cool. Bill makes them there uh, in Klamath. And he is like the pretty much uncontended king of trails in Idaho and uh, he is like the guy so I am really really amped about setting this thing up all right so now we got the 300 up here I'm gonna take the headlight off and get that thing mounted up all right so this is the part that has to be for the KTM anyway these are gonna bolt to where the fender bolts go Let's just run them through. Got these little plastic spacers. All right, so we got the bolts tightened in down there. Honestly, that's kind of a pain. Uh, if you guys order one of these um, mounts, just know that getting those bolts in there is kind of a bear. Uh, it really helps to have a kind of a wobble head uh, socket to get down in there, so that worked out good. Now we're putting the bolts in up here they go into the triple clamps. Uh, let me go get the saw. I'm super excited about the saw. Let me show you my new, my new toy. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah, guys. Here it is. The still MS-194T. This thing is awesome. Top handle. 16-inch uh, bar. Gas-powered. Freaking awesome little chainsaw. So believe the way this goes is like that just like that that's perfect and then there we go there we go that is rad really super stoked about having that thing on there we're gonna have a good year honestly i have for too many years not been doing my fair share of trail clearing partially because i just like to ride uh, and then also because i haven't had a chainsaw or a mount now i have both so i got no excuses and it is time to go cut some trails this thing is going to be awesome obviously saw comes off real fast uh, just those two straps comes out of the way ready to rock and roll um, and then the mount, it's going to take a little bit to get it off and on, but uh, not too bad. I think once I ditch that computer, which I think is exactly what I'm going to do, then uh, the whole thing will go a lot faster. So, sweet. All right, guys, it's the end of the week. It's the end of the schlag. I have got to go racing. I'm actually taking a day off, heading to Utah to the National Heron Hound, racing the 125. So make sure you check out that video. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. A big old fat man racing a tiny little motorcycle um and yeah it should be a ton of fun anyway i hope you guys like that i hope you get out spread the gospel of two wheels and i desperately hope that what we're doing here is inspiring you guys to work on and get out and ride your dirt bikes